First of all, thank you for your excellent documentary. We just enjoyed it. And we are still answering questions. And uh, secondly, uh, well, thank you for your time for joining us. And uh, well, maybe I'll start with some questions and later our audience, our viewers may join in. So I yes. have a very general question, you know, uh, about, first of all, about Al Shabaab. Why Denmark? Uh, I understand that uh, there is a Somali community there, but it's quite far away. So what, what's the strategy? Uh, how, how do you think? Why, what, why this option? Yeah, it's not only Denmark. It's, it's the whole of Scandinavia, actually, and the whole of Western Europe, actually. As you saw in the film, there's also a Dutch Somali and a Norwegian Somali and a Finnish Somali. And it's also a phenomenon in, in North America, you in the US and Canada. And uh, we, have a, we have a Somali population here of about 20,000 people. And uh, I think one of the main reasons that, that they are attracted to, to uh, Shabab is that we have been very bad uh, in Denmark at very uh, poor at integrating uh, the Somali community in Denmark. We have, uh, we have this community and they are... It, it, I really realized that, that while working with the film that they are so isolated in the Danish, in, in Danish society. They are, they are um, actually, it sounds strange, but they are living at the bottom of the Danish society and, and they don't have a public voice. There's no Somali people who are, who are in the media or in the art world or in, in, the, in the entertainment world. Um, and, it, and, and also when it comes to restaurants and cultural life, because we have, as I said, we've been very, very poor at integrating the Somali community into into our society, and I think that's one of the main reasons that that it can be interesting for these young men who are sort of ruthless and sort of uh, cast in this uh, trap, this limbo in Denmark, and it becomes very uh, interesting for them to find some sort of meaning in their lives because it can be difficult to find a meaning with your life when you are constantly exposed to racism and to discriminate, which is actually the case in, in Denmark and in most of uh, Western Europe. Yeah. And uh, th there were some instances in the documentary when uh, the, uh, the participants, the members of Al-Shabaab uh, mentioned not just uh, Muslim uh, Brotherhood, a community, Umar, but also talked and mentioned about, mentioned their homeland, and Somalia, saving Somalia, and uh, freeing Somalia. So, uh, do you think that uh, there is Muslim fundamentalist or extremism as much as there is some kind of uh, nationalistic sentiments among recruiters? Yeah, obviously, for, for our main storyteller in the film, it was, it was a, a very big issue for him that, that the Christian uh, the Christian troops from Ethiopia had invaded uh, Somalia, and it, and and uh, the story is that uh, for Al Shabaab there was uh, Islamic Courts uh, uh, Union, and they they had the power in Somalia for some time, and when the Ethiopians invaded the country, uh, the Somali Courts sort of uh, collapsed, and out of this, out of the ruins of the Islamic Courts grew Al Shabaab. And as the name says, they are the young ones. Al Shabaab means the young one, and uh, and they came with this uh, spirit of um, of uh, resistance and uh, independence and uh, and fighting against the, especially the Christian invaders who was also backed by the uh, by the U.S. government. So at that point, it had a, a clear nationalistic uh, uh, motivation into it, but then it changed over the course of time. And for our main storyteller, there was a sort of uh, crossroads that where he, he took his decision to stay at home and not go and fight with Al Shabaab because he thought it was wrong to kill uh, his fellow Somalians in that struggle. But at the course of time, the, the, the struggle had uh, developed into a more jihadist uh, struggle for, for some of the guys. So I think there's been a, a pressure from the more nationalistic points of view to, to a more uh, internationalistic jihadist uh, point of view. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and maybe just for a moment, maybe you can uh, turn around to, to see all of us. Yeah. So um, I can see you guys. Yeah, yeah but not just me. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs>
they showed the same pattern in all these cities that the Somali community they are the most unemployed, they are, have the lowest rate of education, and they don't own their own homes, uh, almost not none of them. And this, these indicators tell us that this is a very vulnerable community. And, and, uh, and that, our, our main objective with the film was to, to sort of point the fingers not only at the young men who do this, because we can all agree that it is very wrong to blow yourself up in the midst of a tent with, with young doctors. Yeah. We all agree upon that. But we wanted to point the, the, the arrow against ourselves. What, what is our role as a white majority in Denmark? What is our role in their radicalization? Because also, the politicians are also radicalized. They speak in more and more harsh terms about uh, 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 jail sentence, about deporting them, about deporting their families, and about uh, taking their passports and all kinds. They're actually quite, they're, they're trying to compete with, these, with, it, with it, each other when it comes to being uh, law and order and uh, and you know, uh, strict measurement. They, they don't really discuss. Okay, what is our daily society uh, contributing with when it comes to radicalization of these young men? Uh, have you just described the whole uh, political elite of Denmark, or if there are some tangible alternatives instead of punishing and making immigration stricter, etc.? Of course, there there are there are also people who work seriously with the these issues and try to to uh, try to uh, uh, tell the politicians that that the world is not black and white. The world is it's full of all kinds of nuances, and we also have a responsibility. But if you talk about the politicians and they're the one making the laws, <laughs> they're elected for four years at a time, and you and there's no votes in talking about our own guilt or our own uh, weak points. There's only votes in saying uh, jihad and suicide actions uh, is something the devil made, and we have to be uh, uh, hardliners on this. What about so the I think left? Yeah. Sorry. What about Sorry? the left? What about the left? General the political left, leftist. Uh, oh, the left. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, but uh, the leftists in Denmark, of course, they are, they are, they. Maybe they have a little more nuance, but actually they are also sometimes, I think, tempted to to uh, to join in in that uh, in that discourse that is that is about law and order because they are so afraid of their, their voters. I'm sorry to say because I, yeah. as you okay. imagine, I sympathize with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what about the general feedback from the Somali community and from a wider Danish uh, society? Uh, you mean feedback uh, yeah, on the field? Yeah. What, what was the reaction? Uh, we were actually very nervous about that because we were afraid that the Somali community would feel that, oh, okay, here comes another Somali bashing documentary on, on primetime television, and now we are once again are going to hear that we are potential terrorists and criminals and, and all that stuff. But but we, uh, before the film uh, premiered on Danish television, we actually showed it to to some groups in this party. Yeah. And uh, they were they were actually as nervous about this as we thought they would be. But when they saw the film, uh, to my big, to our big relief, uh, when they saw the film, they reacted with, "Oh, thank you for 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 actually talking about this with nuances." And with some uh, some uh, gray tones between the black and white, and actually trying to understand why uh, the young men are, are attracted to to Al Shabab. Yeah. So the, the the reaction has been very positive, and I think that just a little bit we we uh, helped also the Somali community break this taboo because Al Shabab has really been a taboo in the in the Somali community because it's it's connected with a lot of shame. When, 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 when the young people are attracted to this and also with some fear because people are afraid of, of the sympathizers. But I think that especially Abukar and, and, uh, and the shadow who is the, the narrator in the film, they, they have helped breaking this taboo so the Somali community also can talk a bit more openly about, about the, the problems with the, 
with rent transition. Yeah, and just I just want to make sure that we understand correctly. Do do you see Denmark as a general typical case for Scandinavian cities or for Northern Europe or Europe in this regard in terms of Muslim minorities and? Actually, actually, I think we are, uh, if we compare ourselves to Sweden, and we do that a lot, they are much better integrating foreigners into their society, and they have a much more um, a humanistic approach to, to uh, people of another color than we have. Uh, so I, actually, we are, we are one of the worst countries in, in, uh, in Western Europe when it comes to integration and when it comes to real Real solidarity with with, with the, the people who are, are not Danish, who have a lot of skin color. Yeah. So I think we're. Um, I'm not proud to say that, but I think we're one of the the the, the baddest countries when it comes to to integration. Yeah, uh, I don't want to hijack the voice, so maybe someone wants to ask a question. Can't uh, what she's built up, but. I can translate also, maybe some volunteers. Um, I would come closer. Yeah, just come closer to be heard. Uh, hi, Bob. Thanks hi. for the movie. It was really informative and interesting. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, if you know what it was your documentary had on the local society. Did it make a voice to the government and did it mobilize larger group of population and what was the outcome in the end uh, and what was the reaction from the audience and public? You mean uh, in, in relation to, to the film? Yeah, uh, like what was, uh, how did the Danish people react after uh, watching the movie? Did they feel that they need to do some change and to make their voice heard toward the government? Um, it's a good question. It's it's very difficult to to actually uh, feel that sometimes that they, they are doing something. But we had a very interesting experience at the at the opening of the film in Copenhagen. Uh, we had the Danish Minister of Justice in in the, in the panel. Room. There was supposed to be a debate after the film, and she had been one of the one of the toughest hardliners. And then she uh, the the microphone was handed to her. And she said all the stuff that we all the time wanted to hear from the politicians, that we also had a role to play in the radicalization and we have to be a lot better at including people in our society. And, and you know, the whole, the whole room was like, wow, she, she is like turned, she's turned around on, on you know, a, a coin. Uh, and then it, it turned out that the day after she resigned <laughs> from office. So it was an opportunity for her to say what she maybe meant all the time. But she's in real politics, and, that, and that's it's all about you know it's all about strategies and voters and all that stuff. It's been it's been hard to identify the the, the actual changes changes that the film has had if it had had any. I, as I said, I think the film has helped the. The debate on on Al Shabaab and on radicalization a bit, um, but it's election year, and actually we are in the middle of election uh, uh, campaigns right now. We have an election on the June on June 18th, yeah. which makes it very difficult to uh, to have real discussions about our society because everything about is about voters. So I'm sorry to say that it hadn't had the the effect on the Danish society that we would have liked it to have. Maybe some another question. Okay, just, just one more from me. Maybe two yeah. questions, and that's it. Uh, my guess is that you you would probably not happy be happy about the Danish media either. The general? <laughs> yeah, the mainstream media, TV, and mainstream television. I think Danish media, if we talk generally, are very focused on, on uh, selling newspapers, uh, creating clicks on the internet, um, uh, selling headlines, um, and, the, and the politicians are very much into that uh, flow of logic. I mean, so they come with all these uh, statements that they know will generate 
a headline on, on the internet media for, for half a day or maybe uh, just for two hours. And this is a battle that is going on all the time and it's the media and the politicians and also other people uh, who have participated in the public debate. It's getting more and more superficial because uh, the, the pace and the, the, and the, the speed uh, of everything makes the, makes the debate very undimensional. And of course, there are still some of the Danish media who are trying to, you know, trying to hold on to some kind of depth uh, into the discussion and to the reporting. But I think, like everywhere else in, in, the, in, the, in Western Europe and America, we, we, we see media as more and more focused on, on the, the headlines and on the clicks on the internet. And the politicians, they don't resist that. They just tap right into it and, and make all these statements that sometimes. Crazy. I see. So uh, we could we could use a, a very good criticism of the Danish media in general. Yeah. And and the last one. Uh, are you playing some kind of a follow up about the story because it's a very specific story of individuals and uh, or maybe you, you could just inform us about the fate of uh, Muhammad. Yeah, we can take that first. Uh, um, uh, Mohammed is still in the Al Shabab, yeah. and he doesn't want to come home. After we stopped shooting and stopped editing, there was one uh, telephone call where Abuka talked to his son. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to be in our film with his with his voice, uh, but he's okay that we that we're doing the film, and he does not want to come home. He yeah. he is uh, convinced in his his beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, regarding the shadow, the our narrator in the film. He's still struggling with his life. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes the it goes one, down. Sorry, the one who is not visible? Yes, yeah. the, the, yeah. the squid. Yeah. Uh, we have very much contact with him still, and, uh, and, and sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. He's struggling, and, but he hasn't given up yet. Uh, regard, what was the other question? No, yeah, the follow-up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're actually planning on follow-up, and we're seeking, we're seeking finan uh, financial support for a follow-up. And our follow-up will deal with the with the Western uh, warriors who are have left Al Shabaab and is actually trapped in the, in this limbo in Somalia because if they go to the Western countries they will go to jail for a long time and uh, in most of the countries they will also be deported when they have to serve their jail sentence and if they stay in Somalia they are actually in danger because of course Al Shabaab is not very um, uh, friendly towards uh, discernment. Yeah. So that's happened in this middle and we want to investigate what, what are we as societies and, and governments doing at this? Do we actually want them home or do we want them to disappear or, or what is actually going on? So that it's, it's a big investigation and, uh, and uh, but we're working on it. Yeah, that's glad to hear. So we are probably out of our time. Mr. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching our film at the yeah. end. And good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.